Our body has the marks of the successive handiwork of evolution, and we wouldn't be the same if we'd been designed by engineers. Let's imagine a fantastic scenario where a handful of enlightened researchers study this question. How can we create an ideal body and optimize its performance? In a secret location, they would think about possible improvements to be made to the functioning of our organs. They would reason according to logical and efficient criteria. Surely they would redesign our anatomy. They'd be looking for solutions to correct incoherences or rationalize mechanisms. A human body has clearly not been designed by an engineer. Why? Because there are systems, really their efficiency is questionable. For example, we have a pump inside the thoracic cage, which is the heart, and well, the exit, the main aorta, is just a sort of pump there where the pressure is at its maximum, which is angled at 180 degrees. You can't say that's optimal. So things work, but we'll never know in biology if the way that we're made up, if such and such an organ, could work better than it works now. If our body doesn't work as badly as all that, its functions aren't always optimal. Some organs recount the sometimes tortuous genesis which led them to their current form. An example of the handiwork of evolution is a specific nerve called the phrenic nerve, which allows the diaphragm to contract. The diaphragm is the muscle beneath the thoracic cage and which allows the thoracic cage to open and thus to open the lungs so as to ventilate and to breathe. So it's an important muscle, but, well, the diaphragm's motor nerve is not connected to the spinal cord in the segment right in front of it, the shortest distance, I'd like to say, but is connected around the third cervical vertebrae. To simplify things, it would doubtless have been more logical to connect this nerve to the spinal cord closer and to spare it this long, useless journey. If things are like this, there's a good reason for it. 380 million years ago, this muscle block we have beneath the thoracic cage was close to the gills, behind and under the head, in the first tetrapods, in animals with fleshy fins which were still in the water at the time. During the next 200 million years of evolution of tetrapods, four-limbed organisms, this block of muscle kept on moving back right to the rear of the thoracic cage, where it is now in mammals. And the course of the phrenic nerve is a historical route which follows the muscle which it has always commanded. Since it's a long journey, from time to time this nerve folds, and well, that's when you have hiccups. To sum that up, hiccups remind us that in a very distant past, we were fish. Perhaps it's a vague memory buried in our brain which leads us to drink water when we have those damned hiccups. This little discomfort of our daily life bears witness to the long history which links us to fish. Amongst our distant aquatic cousins, surely the placoderms left us the richest inheritance. Well, placoderms were the first vertebrates that began the body plan that would carry on to the rest of evolution. In other words, the first creatures to have paired limbs at the front and paired hind legs and jaws and teeth and a skull that was fairly advanced. For a long time, the placoderms were associated with another species which is still living, sharks. We used to think that placoderms and sharks were very closely related, but the latest theories are starting to show that placoderms are a separate group and that they were ancestral to both sharks and the bony fishes, which include the tetrapods, the lineage leading to us. So placoderms are our deep, deep ancestors of all living vertebrates. Having been the dominant species in the oceans for 70 million years, the placoderms disappeared. Their heritage is now written in stone. Fossils are the grand narrative of the evolution of life on the planet. 
every fossil is a life once lived. It's a story that tells us about the great diversity of life. It is sure that just before the placoderms disappeared, another major event marked the history of our evolution, the conquest of the Earth. Is the terrifying Beaucourt skink that was thought to be extinct a distant copy of the first terrestrial tetrapods? It's in the southeast of Australia, in the rocks of the Grampians National Park, that John Long hopes to find traces of the first animals that had ventured beyond the water. These environments here represent ancient seas and ancient rivers, and they were full of life. Ancient fishes, for example, many different kinds, uh, but also probably the first land animals, the tetrapods, left their footprints in these rocks about 390 million years ago. Some of our aquatic ancestors, which tried the first expeditions out of the water, perhaps looked like this strange animal. The periophthalmus, which lives in the muddy mangroves of tropical zones, has the look of a chimera. Half fish, half frog, it lives both in and out of the water. Its multi-use fins are its feet. And though it has lungs, it also breathes through its skin like batrations. Now here's an interesting mix of adaptations which could reflect an intermediate phase between life in the water and life on land. But it was later, on solid land, that other crucial adaptations took place which punctuated the history of our body. Recent research shines a new light on some of the great stages of our terrestrial evolution. The maxillary bones, which allowed our reptile ancestors to chew, have progressively formed the miniature bonelets of our middle ear, thanks to which we can hear. This incredible mutation can still be observed in marsupials. Our brain is not that different from that of the great apes, even if it is larger. But most astonishingly, we don't have the largest brain of our line. 40,000 years ago, Neanderthal had a larger brain than we do. And finally, our hand, so skillful and adapted to precise manipulation, is a lot more primitive than we think. But all that is another chapter of the secret history of our body. A history which made us the humans that we are today. <laughs>